unemployment in India has been a burning issue for decades and no government, past or present, has been able to truly crack it. 1800 candidates for just 10 positions, the side railing at the hotel's entrance collapsed. Despite promises and policies, the question remains, why is unemployment still such a massive challenge? India, despite its growing global presence, continues to be a place where millions of youth struggle to find employment. And it's not just lack of jobs, there's a deeper story at play here. So what exactly does it mean to be unemployed in India? India has had a very strange uh, experience that for decades our unemployment rate has been extremely low. Okay? And yet when you talk to any person, okay, you find that yes, they would somehow consider themselves underemployed. India's employment landscape is vast and varied. It ranges from high-end corporate jobs in urban centres to the field and farms of rural India, where millions are engaged in agriculture. The harsh reality. Agriculture is still the biggest employer in India, especially for young people in rural areas. The reliance on agriculture points to a deeper issue. The modern economy just hasn't created enough jobs to absorb India's massive and growing labour force. If you have a college degree and there is a family farm, you might not want to work on the farm, but you'll return to the farm so that you have some way of making a living. If you are uh, somebody with a primary education, no education, you'll become a labourer and pick up whatever day labour is available. So individuals find work, but that work is neither consistent with their qualification, nor with their desire, nor is it always enough to support them uh, in any reasonable lifestyle. But how bad is the unemployment problem really? According to the latest data, India's unemployment rate was 3.2% between July 2023 and June 2024. A figure that hasn't changed much over the past few years. But what's interesting is that the labour force participation rate, the percentage of people working or looking for work, has increased from 57.9% to 60.1%. Female participation has grown significantly, while male participation has seen a slight uptick. But on the flip side, urban unemployment has climbed from 8.6% to 8.9%. The numbers tell the power of the story, but they don't show the whole picture. The unemployment issue does not, uh, in its very number, tell you how many are underemployed or how many are overemployed or whether they're getting a quality job or not. The salaried employed people have come down, but the self-employed people, the numbers have gone up. Now, who are those self-employed people? Most people in agriculture are self-employed. And as you would know that in, in India, 46% of the total workforce is right now in agriculture. The unemployment rate for educated individuals aged 15 and above is even higher. 7.1% and for India's youth aged 15 to 29 is a staggering 10.2%. For urban female youth, it's as high as 20.1%. But here's the real question. Is it enough to count only those who are actively looking for work? What about the millions who have given up? The ones who are disillusioned, disheartened and no longer even trying? In India, the, the salaried jobs are not growing as much as the self-employed numbers are growing. So which is why there is this criticism, a valid criticism, uh, that we are reducing our unemployment rate but we are not improving the quality of our employment. We also can't ignore the rural-urban divide. While half of the youth are still working in agriculture, these jobs often don't provide a sustainable livelihood. The challenge is that the modern economy just hasn't created enough jobs for the urban youth either. See, employment is a function of output and output is a function of investments. And that is the reason why there is a huge gap. Uh, you know, urban attracts more investment, 
rural don't attract more investment in many economic activities except agriculture sector and obviously that is the reason why there is a huge gap in terms of the employment opportunities uh, between urban and rural area and i think that pressure is showing up on the urban areas the story of india's unemployment crisis isn't just about numbers it's about the emotional toll young people especially in urban areas feel stuck in a cycle of depression and disappointment the promise of a better future feels distant almost impossible youth unemployment skyrocketed in 2020 leading to mass frustration it's not just the lack of job it's the sense that their dreams are slipping away so how did we get here the root of the crisis run deep and a part of the problem can be traced back to historical policies that didn't adequately address employment after independence the indian government aimed for a self sufficient economy expecting agriculture and labor intensive industry to absorb the growing workforce but the growth wasn't fast enough an unemployment doubled between 1956 and 1972 by the mid 1970s it became clear that growth alone wasn't going to solve the problem however growth averaged 3.5% instead of planned 5% doubling unemployment from 1956 to 1972 as the rate rose from 2.6% to 3.8% by the mid 1970s it became evident that the growth alone couldn't tackle unemployment promoting the government to launch employment generation and poverty alleviation programs during the 5th 5 year plan 1974 to 1979 targeting both urban and rural job creation it sometimes i feel like we are being too harsh on ourselves right this was also the era when our population grew uh, the education grew right so suddenly you had a lot more people both because of education and population growth who were looking for these jobs The economic liberalization of 1991 was supposed to transform the landscape and it did to some extent. Foreign investment came in and new sectors grew. But even then, much of the new employment was informal. Jobs without security or stability. It boils down to policy failures. The government has prioritized economic growth over job creation. As industry modernized productivity increased but jobs didn't education too is a part of the problem india's education system still focuses heavily on rote learning leaving students without the skill employers need even today countless graduates are unemployed simply because they lack employable skills we have not addressed the issue of skilling and education if only we had skilled and educated our people and focused on creating a more vibrant manufacturing sector then probably this problem that you are raising would have been far less pronounced or far less uh, uh, you know uh, disruptive a report by nascom indicates that india could face a shortage of 1.4 million to 1.9 million tech professionals by 2026 with an expected demand for 93 to 96 lakh techies while only 75 to 78 lakhs are projected to be available the discrepancy highlights a critical challenge in meeting industry demands although around 1.5 million engineers graduate annually only a small fraction are deemed job ready Estimates suggest that up to 80% of Indian engineers may be unemployable in the current knowledge economy due to inadequate skills. A major reason is India's dual economy, formal and informal. Nearly 92% of the workforce operate in the informal sector, which means that most of the workers don't have access to job security, benefits or government support. Then there is the obsession with government jobs. Even today millions of Indians dream of securing a government job for the stability and benefits it provides part of it is a sense of security okay? part of it is a history of feeling that it is a um, prestigious position the government job and as an obsession is 
that actually government workers at a lower level are paid much better than comparative workers at the pri- in the private sector uh, historically india has had this salary compression where the idea was that the government a government was supposed to be the model employer okay which sets the wage floor and so even though the fifth com- pay commission onwards there was a desire to get away from it and reduce the salary compression it has never really happened for many these job represents not just employment but upward mobility in a society where caste still plays a significant role it's more than just a career it's a path to a better life so what can be done the solution isn't just about creating more jobs it's about redefining work improving education and skilling the workforce to meet the demands of a rapidly changing economy the idea that government is going to create these jobs is not a very reasonable expectation because the government employment itself has not kept pace it's been pretty stagnant over time and frankly in spite of everybody's desire to have sarkari job there are only so many sarkari jobs that can be made available how you skill your people how you educate your people and how you make sure that your manufacturing sector gives adequate emphasis not just on job creation but also on the quality job creation as well as uh, on on the on whether you are able to export more so i think it is necessary to to ensure uh, that the private sector comes in and 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 a condition conducive to private sector playing a larger role and creating more jobs uh, is 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 there india has the potential to be a global workforce powerhouse but to get there we need to reimagine how we create jobs and equip our youth for the future the solution isn't just about finding jobs for today youth it's about building a future where work is meaningful accessible and sustainable for everyone.